And tonight we are on the eve of the budget. And as we have been told to expect from all the experts who have seen and possibly in the room uh, tonight as they still crunch the numbers and finalize that document that the finance minister will be presenting, we've been told to brace for austerity. In fact, you don't have to be told because we know the COVID economy is still pretty much alive. Plus, this is going to be a post-election budget. What we know when it comes to post-election budgets over the years is that they've always been austere. Always. Sometimes you find um, some, you know, exceptions. Like in 2017, when you have a new government, normally the new government, what they do is to say, well, listen, I've come in. It's not my fault. So they introduce all the hard policies, blaming the old government because they're riding on the back of the political capital. And then towards the end, then they reverse and bring you the Father Christmas budget. This particular uh, MPP administration, the first term, started with a very, very sweet budget. Um, now we're beginning to see, after the elections, that we're possibly heading towards a bit of austerity, uh, uh, compounded by COVID, obviously. A few things that we are learning from the 2022-2025 uh, budget preparation guidelines, and a lot of some of these we expect uh, to become the basis uh, for the budget that's going to be read tomorrow. I want to go through it very quickly for you. So we're going to be expecting from, from that um, the government to talk a bit about um, the 22 budget, focusing on revitalizing and transforming the economy through digitalization. And it's not coincidence that the Vice President, uh, a couple of weeks back, indeed made delivered a major speech on this. It was a part of the build-up uh, towards tomorrow. So you, we're expecting that we're going to hear a bit more about this tomorrow. Industrialization is going to be big, we expect, in the budget tomorrow. Competitive import substitution, export expansion, and the creation of decent jobs, uh, you know, particularly for the youth. We also expect a bit of that tomorrow. Now, these are some of the key figures that will be important tomorrow because always it's been an issue. Projected revenue versus expenditure. And if you're spending far more than you're earning, you know that you're going to be in debt, right? Projected expenditure. We, we expect this to be around 128 billion CDs. That is how much we're going to spend. And the projected revenue, in terms of how much we are going to bring in, is 89 billion. So obviously, you begin to see straight away that we are spending far more than we are earning. That leaves you the deficit of 39%. Now, this is the challenge here that the finance minister will have to somehow um, bridge. And that is why many are suggesting tonight that tomorrow we may see some measures to raise revenue. When you're doing that, it means you possibly are piling a bit more pressure on all of us because we will have to contribute our quota to bridging this particular gap. We'll talk about how government plans to do this. Now, if you look at a comparative analysis expenditure in 2020, 2022, 2021, it was actually was 113 billion in terms of the expenditure. In 2022, this is what we expect. The government is going to cut back on the expenditure to somewhere around 72 uh, billion. Now, you, you, you can expect that to happen. Why? Because we're talking about austerity, right? That is what we anticipate. We'll see what the budget says. But we largely expect that tomorrow's budget will be austere. And you see that in what the projections are saying, because you're spending far less than 2021. You can still be spending a bit more when you don't have enough and the economy is struggling. Now, you talk also about compact analysis revenue. Again, if you look at this, the projected expenditure is 72. Projected revenue is 89 uh, billion. Okay, so you're, you're raising a bit more um, a, this year or next year compared to um, you know the previous year, which then will be will be this year. Now you look at the projected amount to be spent on interest payment and compensation. This is always one of those areas that takes a lot of the money that we all make, right? You have 37 billion, uh, and this is 20, 28 percent, 28.9 percent going into interest payments. What we are paying for the loans that we've acquired. And you have compensation of employees alone, it's uh, 34.6 billion. Uh, that's a lot of money, right? That's 26%. So if you put these two together, the money that we are making as a country is almost gone. What is left for the rules, the schools, etc., is pretty small. So government will have to borrow more or raise more revenue. So government says, tomorrow we have to do something, be creative about this. If you look at the corporate analysis compensations, 2022 government is going to spend $4 billion more than they're spending this year to pay teachers, uh, etc. across the country. And if you look also at interest payments, government is going to spend about $2 billion CDs more 
in paying uh, interest on the loans that they've taken, right? And again, if you look at the arrears, a lot of arrears that needs to be cleared. We have talked about one billion of arrears that needs to be cleared, which is which is a drop from 2021. So that can be a good a good thing to watch. Capital expenditure, you remember that this is very key for all of you who uh, are thinking about your roads, etc. 11.8 billion. Some say pretty small, a drop in the mighty ocean. Breakdown of the total revenue. Let's do that a bit more because if you look at the tax, tax alone is going to bring from what we expect 70 billion. That's a lot. But then if you look at non tax revenues, anything else is 8.4 billion. Then oil revenue is 6, 7 billion. But we expect this possibly to be a bit more because we've seen the world price of crude go up. If it's gone up because we are an oil exporting company, that means that we're possibly expecting to be earning a bit more around this particular area. That's what Minpo have said. The windfall you're making from the global increase in uh, the international crude oil price increase uh, because you're an exporter, use that to cushion consumers so the fuel prices will be stable. Nation Training Allowance says the loan is uh, it, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty huge going forward. Um, we, we're hearing the previous government say, scrap this because this is something that you can easily do away with. There's a lot to go through for you. But one of the key controversial issues is the benchmark value discounts that were, were, were imposed, right? Which meant that if you're importing stuff into this country, you got this discount. You imported it cheaper because of the duties you paid at the port. We understand, and this has been confirmed, and so there's no controversy around this, that tomorrow government is saying that we are taking off those discounts, those uh, you know, goods clearing discounts. We are taking it off. So 50% of that that was there is going to come back. So you're going to have 100%. Uh, Guta is complaining. But the, the uh, in industries, the Association of Ghana industries say that's a good thing because you see, we are producing locally. The raw materials, if you produce locally, then that doesn't affect you because competition doesn't kill you. But there's a very interesting dynamics there that we need to consider. And we'll talk about that when I sit down with my guests who are already joining me as we build up um, to the budget tomorrow. This indeed is the eve, and this is where to be PM Express. We are back after this break. Thank you for staying with us. Well, this is the eve of the budget, and I must admit, this is possibly one of the most anticipated budgets uh, in recent history for many, many reasons. Um, one of the obvious reasons is because of where the economy is currently, and we also know the global you know, situation is conspiring to make it pretty hard. Global uh, you know, crude prices have gone up, and that's why you've seen the increases in fuel prices at the pumps. And you've seen the, the way the CD is also depreciating quite heavily against the dollar. Um, so everything else is, is just in a mix, and government needs to react to that. Joining me to look at all that is uh, Setchuma Kwaba. These are the players in the end. They, they have felt, they feel this as so well. I like to hear them. Uh, Setchuma Kwaba is the CEO of the Association of Ghana Industries, and that's the AGI. Also joining me is Dr. Joseph Obey. He's the national president of the Ghana Union of Traders Association. When it comes to the policy interventions, uh, these two leaders and their members feel it the most. So we need to tap into that. Um, representing the workers, because the workers are also the mess there, uh, Morgan Ayawene will join us. He's the General Secretary of the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union. And then in the back, on the back of all the fuel debate, and fuel affects almost everybody, and especially because of drivers, and because they, they will feel and pass it on. So we have David Agbuado, and David is the Vice Chairman of the Concerned Drivers Association. He joined us via Zoom. And they, it was part of the association. Uh, David, thanks for joining us. Um, please unmute for me. And the His Association um, joined the 15 other unions to hold a press conference two weeks ago to say they are going to park their cars and strike unless government scrap uh, as many as five taxes on petroleum products. And then, of course, Professor Lord Mensa is the economist um, to, to guide us through the fundamentals that may decide what policy government adapts uh, tomorrow. So there's a lot to go through. Let me go through straight to the most controversial issue that affects everybody too, just like fuel. What we import a lot, we are a country that imports a lot. So when the import duties go up, it tends to affect almost everything else. And that is why we've seen statements from Pharmacy Council, um, Guta, um, Mr. Obeng, so you held a press conference yesterday when on the back of the um, you know, understanding revelation that the, the, the uh, clearing discounts, you know, goods clearing discounts, the 50%, was going to be re, uh, re, you know, re, uh, removed, 
because it was there for the last, since 2019, yes. Why are you not happy with this? First place, um, the statement came from Ghana Revenue Authority. And so we did not understand why they should come out with a policy statement. Because they are policy um, uh, implementers. Mm -hmm. And then we were talking to the policy makers um, to, the, to the extent that, please. Mm. Yeah, we are talking to the policy statement, um, poli uh, policy makers that we have to do stakeholder engagement. That was after when our brothers from um, um, AGI have gone to make a lot of um, issues concerning the benchmark reduction. And so we are also called on, um, um, to the EMT where we also make our, made our case. So the consensus there was that we have to um, make a thorough um, stakeholder engagement. At the presidential, um, presidential forum um, at um, MPC Hotel, the, the same issue also came. That's the business dialogue mm -hmm. that was held at KBC. And that one, the um, senior minister himself said that um, we have to engage ourselves because it's a very dicey issue. So we are waiting for such a dialogue. Well, don't forget that um, this thing did not come out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. It came because we are having a serious problem. The regional policy. The regional policy, because we are having a serious problem. Well, the duties well, that we're paying, the duties that we're paying. You, stay, you are a journalist, yeah. and you know that before 2019, all the issues around trading was um, high duty rates and all that. Government could not reduced the duty rates for us and altered for the discounting. We did not tell government to do that. But because they were challenged with the CET, they adopted the um, re, um, discount. And so if uh, for some reason you even want to um, um, adopt a new way to solve the same problem, then we have to sit down, know that we are, um, uh, uh, this is what the mitigating factor now is. But it shouldn't be that you are imposing anything on us. Mm. That's why we didn't uh, accept it. Because you cannot reverse it. They say it's benchmark value reversal. Yes. Reversing. So you are reversing us to the back pro, uh, the what old it problem. Be, yes. Uh, what problem? And uh, who is going to accept that? Take me to a problem. Did, 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 did the the discount? Did it solve your problem? Yes. The Fifty percent. Yes, it did. In what ways exactly? Yeah, it mitigated uh, the plight of the trading co uh, uh, community. So that, what, what and fundamentally then, how? how and then it's all, because it, we're able to contain prices. Okay. And then we're able also to save uh, from the duty that we're uh, otherwise making. Mm -hmm. And then transfer the benefit thereof to the consuming public. Okay. Who were also fatigued in terms of high taxes and all that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we had a lot. Because had it not been the mm -hmm. ben benchmark value. What would we have done at the time, 2020, when um, things were very um, uh, bad for all of us? Uh, it was the only last straw of hope okay. that uh, mitigated the plight the of the trading. I mean, community. Mr. Chumakoba, so that's just the, 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 the problem here. So I, I see there's a huge, overwhelming majority of Ghanaians, um, either are traders, I mean, we are buying it. We are a country of buying and selling, really. Um, so there's a sense that if you do the multiplier effect of this discount, you have possibly more people benefiting from this because the ripple effect on, you know, I've got so kind of spare parts and goods and services because we're all traders. Um, and that it is a bad idea for government to say we are scrapping it. What, what, what do you say to that? Thank you very much. It's indeed not a bad idea at all. In any case, let me explain this, that government and even the AGI advocacy we did on this was not to ask for total withdrawal of the policy. Government is not scrapping the policy, and I think that has to be clearly understood. For us, from the very day uh, this was announced in 2019, 19, yes. AGI spoke about it. I remember I said, speaking to you Exactly, and we said it's not a good policy as far as industrialization is concerned, because government has an industrialization agenda. You are doing one district, one factories. 
you are doing planting for food and jobs. As I speak now, government had recently inaugurated two factories in the north to produce rice. Each of them, they spent about 7.5 million Ghana cities setting them up. And they are there, they are not producing. Why? Because you have an agenda to support industrialization, and you are doing so because you want to create jobs. So if you have this agenda, you don't come out with a policy that runs counter to that very agenda. So the position we had was that, and it's the same position we hold today, the position we had was that there's no point reducing the benchmark values for products that you have local capacity to produce. Okay. There are products that you are producing them locally. If you look in this room, your computers, all these beautiful machines you have here, you are not producing them locally. So for those, those kind ones. of items, leave them, you can, you can decide to scrap the benchmark value to zero. It's not our problem. But the ones that people have invested, government itself is investing, agro-processing, all the other products that we are producing them locally, why do you reduce the benchmark values and make the imports cheaper than local production? When you do that, it means that you are putting the local producers out of market. Mm -hmm. Government didn't understand us at the time. Maybe they listened more to uh, Mr. Bean's uh, uh, group. But two years down the line, it's becoming obvious what the impact has been. And the effect is that a lot of our companies that are producing these products are suffering now. Today, we have, since February this year, one of the rice mills, they've not even done any production at all. They, they used to have more than 400 workers. Now they have just about 200. So they've lost jobs. The, those producing oils, the same thing. It cuts across several products. So even though we accepted it, it's not that we accepted it, we, we were very much against it, but we didn't have a choice. It mm -hmm. was imposed. But we lived with it. But we monitored it. And today, we are seeing the effect. We are losing jobs. This budget, what everybody is talking about is how is government going to help create jobs? And the way to create jobs is support industrialization. That's why government came out with the industrialization agenda. So if that is your objective, I don't think that much as we are importing a lot, should we continue to import a lot? Then we continue to cry out for jobs. So you don't bring a policy that runs counter to your own objectives and plans. And that is where, and every country actually protects its market a bit. The fact is that we are not, it's not even a situation where government is, is giving, is, is imposing any special duties on the imported products. That's not what has happened. What they did was they reduced the duties on it through the benchmark value reduction. Okay, so when you did that, and we on, are saying, on selected goods. At the time, it was general, so general, it was applied. But for now, we are saying that do it on selected products. And that is what government is trying to do now. So at this moment, they are not applying it and to the all the products. And the selected products, the, the definition of that is for those products that we, we have the capacity to produce locally. Exactly. Um, don't, don't remove the discount. Exactly the point. We say the products that we are producing them locally, mm -hmm. don't remove the discount because when you do that, you make the imports cheaper yeah. and you kill local industries. It's as simple as that. But, so but, it's not a total scrap at all. But Dr. Abing, you, you can't disagree with this. Oh, that's where he's uh, mistaken. You realize that he said that they couldn't even get the uh, raw material for the mailing machines because we don't have full sufficiency. We don't have it. So until we attain full sufficiency, we have to do import and, um, and manufacturing side by side. And that's why they don't get it. What is the uh, local demand for rice? And how, do we, uh, how much do we produce? Then yeah, when this uh, um, seller, they needed um, the local rice, they couldn't get it because there was shortage. And so what is your problem? The shortfall we also bring, and that we cannot surcharge the people of Ghana while we haven't attained full sufficiency because somebody is trying to do manufacturing that they should be punished until a sad time that we reach our self-sufficiency, if it is 20 years. It is not fair. We won't do that. But that, that will put your people at an advantage over the Ghanaian. What advantage because is it? Because the, when, when the discounts are on it, your product that you import will be cheaper than what is produced. No, the problem is that you do not benchmark your frustration on imported good, goods. Because th those goods have already um, gone through traveling, gone through insurance, gone through duty and everything. And so if you are an importer and you are a manufacturer and you benchmark your pricing with imported, then you don't know what you are doing. Where you benchmark your price 
is your competitors offshore, the FOB prices. Mm. And so you talk with government, look, the FOB price in China, in um, Italy, in um, Turkey, for this material is this. But because of this frustration, our FOB price is about 60% higher. That's the bin. The room is too big. And so we do not consume goods. We do not part, uh, buy goods because they are made in uh, your country. It's never done anywhere in the world. Everybody factor the price, the quality, and packaging. But you protect your, you protect your local... It doesn't mean that you have to sell at a sturdy price. Nobody will do that. Even America imports. The advanced nations and all that. They are even here in Ghana. There are so many factories that are doing extremely well. And then no, no importer, venture, to even bring those goods from abroad. There are so many factories. So the, the manufacturing companies, they are not doing badly like we are, we are, we are just want to put. But, but, just but a he, few but companies but, but that he, are lobbying. He's the, but he's the head of them. Oh, he's the head, but people can lobby people to do things. But I'm telling you, there are so many manufacturing companies that they are doing well. Some the plastics, the uh, manufacturing companies they, they, and all that. And then, and then people, the rule. no, not exception because they, they, they have the capacity, they've done their nursery due diligences to know what they are doing. They know what they are doing. And they, do, they know that they have comparative advantage and they compared with the rest of the world. If you're doing manufacturing here and then you start lamentation, it means that you don't know what you're doing because you factored the utility cost, if even it is higher. Mm. Because you will not come and throw money to the, uh, to the, to the bin. Mm. Because when you are uh, coming to establish the factory, you would have known the, the electricity cost, you would have known mm -hmm. the cost of uh, borrowing and all that. If you haven't done that, and then you saw all this problem and you came to invest, and then you start lamentation, you know, it means that you don't know what you are doing. Let, let, me, let me bring a quick one so I can get to uh, speak to... Uh, yeah, but, but what he's saying, I'm, I'm struggling with the logic. If you say you are coming to do manufacturing, you should have known this, you should have known that. When you were also importing, you should have known that these are the duty rates. Mm -hmm. Government hasn't imposed any duty on imported products. This is what we should get clear. 2019, they reduced it. And we said the reduction is affecting local industry. So restate it. Go back to where we were before. This is not a new duty that has been imposed. So if you're also an importer, didn't you know that the rates at which uh, the, the duties were of the, well, the benchmark is being enjoyed by me and you. And now, that's when issue. we are trying, okay, so, so when we are lobbying you, government, you, excuse me, when, 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 he's a, uh, when he's lobbying government to remove the benchmark from uh, the uh, importing community, from the trading community, he's pleading and crying to government that, please, don't touch um, our benchmark. For, for, what fairness, so, what so, irony? I think the point is about part, what of, the, is part of the raw material you use, you import it. Mm -hmm. So... It, it will affect you too. The thing is this, you are promoting something, which is industrialization. Mm. Raw materials are not for consumption. There is something we call pre-production mm. tax and post-production tax. So you're asking in government to countries, exempt those. In most countries, what you do is post-production tax. So impose whatever tax you have. Today, manufacturers, eh, we have a levy of 6%. I know he will talk about it. He always say that the manufacturers are not being asked to pay VAT and all that. And it's all not true. The manufacturers are paying, are, are, are having a position of 6%. Why? Because when you charge VAT, you pay 18.5% to government. You can only recover 12.5%. That's not how VAT works anywhere. In our case, that 6% difference is imposed on the manufacturer's levy. Mm. So that becomes a post-production tax. So we shift tax to post-production because pre-production, the person hasn't sold it. He has not made money out of it. But for the trader, or the, the, the importer, what you import, you sell straight to the market. So if you are paying your tax, there's nothing like pre, uh, pre or post production. So your tax goes like that. But for the production person, for the manufacturer, your, your tax comes afterwards. So that's how the system works. When he was talking, he was talking about uh, we, we, uh, uh, government ensuring that uh, the, the imports becomes, I mean, we. we we, we put more on, on, on the, so that we support local manufacturers. The point is that government has not scrapped the benchmark values or has not said it's that. It's a reduction of It's the... just a reduction. And the reduction was for 
all products. And we are saying that, no, limit it to products that we don't have capacity to produce. It hasn't been scrapped. So if you are talking of the fact that there's no capacity here, have they stopped? We, we, have they banned? We, 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 we produce the rice, uh -huh. but we don't, we, we don't have the capacity in Ghana to feed for, for the demand that exists. So let we me, definitely let, have let, to import. Let, let me give so you, if you. If you scrap so, it, that then will we'll, 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 in so, fact, so, we'll, we'll so, have a negative you know, For some time now, there was a lot of, a lot of talk about growing Ghana local rice. rice, local yes. rice. And a lot of investors came in. I just gave you two examples of Ghana, or government itself, setting up two factories in the north mm. through the REP. Mm. There is Olam, there is uh, 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 Avnash that has a factory in Tamale. Mm. Today, they are not even producing. You say it's because, so of, them. because of this policy? Largely because of that. Okay. It's, it's a, it's let, a let me, part of it. So, so <laughs> let, me just, let me just end with okay. this. The, the point is that all these companies, if they have the, the, the market is good, and we grow the demand, definitely they'll be able to have the capacity to produce yeah. for the entire country. I mean, Professor Lord Mensah is with me. Prof, I'll come to you shortly, but let me go to David Aguado, who's on Zoom with us. Uh, David, uh, thanks for your patience. I know this is one of the most controversial ones, but yours is another very interesting one because of the effect uh, of the fuel prices are there as a concern drivers' union. But let me start even with this, because the benchmark values affect imported vehicles, um, I mean, at the ports. Um, it, it, true? It, the, the values, the discount. The, the, the discount, yeah, yeah. yes. So, so, and, and also for spare parts. Yeah. The spare parts. Mm -hmm. uh, let me start with you, David. David, government says tomorrow they'll remove the discounts that they put on uh, imported spare parts and imported vehicles. Let's start there before we come to the floor. What, what's your position on, on this? What, 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 how will this affect you as a, as a, as a, as a driver's union? I mean, kindly unmute, kindly unmute for me so that we could hear you. Okay, um, let, let's please uh, sort that out because I need to hear his view. Uh, Professor Lord Mensah, I mean, you, you, are, you are the middle man here, just like myself. Where do you stand on this debate? What is the right policy going forward for government? Yeah, of course, um, uh, Evans, um, if you look at the situation on the ground, I mean, government is hard up in terms of, I mean, raising revenue. And so obviously they might find a means of introducing or some, uh, effectively some subsidies that were being provided um, can be removed um, for the government to rake in the necessary, you know, funds that they need to manage this economy. Now, um, if you take the government expenditure momentum over the past years, you realize that it has been on upwards trajectory and it gives the signal that government is on a, a kind of um, aggressive uh, management mood. And uh, for that matter, it doesn't matter um, what kind of funds they will raise, they must spend them. I mean, if you look at the numbers that you showed, um, you realize that our government, we should expect from next year that they will spend around 128.3 um, billion, which is a leap from last year's uh, budgeted expenditure of about 113.8. And if you look at the difference, it's about 14.5 billion. Mm. Now let's come to the uh, the revenue side. Um, the revenue side, government's uh, budgeted revenue last year was around 72.5. And this year, the intention is to um, spend around, to ra raise about around um, 89.1. Well, that's a difference of about 16.6 billion. Mm -hmm. Now you realize that what the government intends to rake in. And if you look at um, our budget review, clearly you could see that on the expenditure side, we're always on point. Um, government has never missed, you know, his expenditure target. Um, let me give you a typical, some numbers here. From January uh, to June 2021, um, government program around 55.5 uh, um, uh, billion, but then the provisional outturn within that period was around 50 billion and over. And that gives you the signal that, yes, indeed, for the revenue, the projection is always almost on point. And so if a government position itself in such a way that there's a target increase of revenue and that we will spend to consume it, then obviously government is in need of money. And that is why in the studios you can hear discussions on 
you know, removal of benchmark values of 50% discount that, you know, importers were enjoying. And effectively, it's a way of, you know, uh, balancing the situation uh, to ensure that government raises the money that um, it needs, I mean, to balance the necessary expenditure. And I have been drumming of a posture which the government came in with um, from the earlier years, and that posture has been on aggressive economic management. We were here when the government established about five ministries, and you, you, can, you can name them. Mm -hmm. Now, all those ministries, the expenditure that went into those ministries, have we perhaps you know, gone down to assess the impact that it has made on this economy? And so you realize that our expenditure trajectory has been going up, but they are not in sync with the revenue that is needed. And the government is on going on with this aggressive posture, which for me, I think it's about time we tone down. Because if you look at our debt you know, profile, it tells you that as a government, it's about time you cut your coat according to your size. If you go back to our budget review, we realize that you know, there was, um, in 2021, uh, 2020, you, there was an item called you know, um, other expenditure which if you look at the breakdown, is purely a expenditure on, uh, on COVID. And clearly, it tells you that government was absorbing some expenditures unnecessarily. I mean, before we went into the COVID, to, the, to, to some extent, extending it all the way down to um, the eve of the Christmas that some of the freebies were removed. And so effectively, government has shot itself in the foot. And now it has to you know, come back to squeeze the people of Ghana and uh, to, to, to come out with so, it. So, so, let's, so, 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 so on, a, on the back of that, to the specific question at hand, so where you stand, should government go ahead with this policy? And we understand that government had taken a decision. <laughs> Is it, will, would it be a smart move to remove these, uh, the, 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 the port clearing discounts of 50%? Well, Ask government uh, intent. Yes, of course. Uh, for now, I would say it's, yes, it is a smart move. Okay. But let me explain the reason why I would say it's a smart move. Okay. Realize that, you know, the essence of giving this discount is to allow these goods to come into the system and then to create some economic vibrance. And I believe that government over the years has realized that they've been giving all this discount, these subsidies, but then in the end, the expectation of the economic activities that these subsidies are supposed to create, they're not getting the necessary revenue that goes with it. And that is why the government want to catch it up at the entry so that when it gets into the system, Whatever happens, they don't give a hoot about it. And also, looking at the government desperation of funds, I mean, to solve immediate problems, they may want to, you know, catch up this 50% upfront. Yeah. I mean, I need to ask you, uh, uh, okay, Dr. Bing, uh, sorry, I'll come to you. Let me go to uh, David Agbada. Uh, Mr. Agbada, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, fantastic. We can hear you now. So I was asking you earlier, as a transport operator and a representative of a transport union, um, what's, how are you reacting to this news that in tomorrow's budget, government um, is expected to remove the discounts that uh, you know, uh, importers of spare parts, etc., used to have? That will also affect cars that you, you like to import for your businesses. Well, what's your quick reaction to that? Thank you once again. My reaction to that is very simple. You see, we are not feeling the impact that government was doing at the past. So I don't see... It's been the benchmark being removed will do anything because when you go to Abu Sokai and then you go to port or you want to buy a vehicle, the prices on it, whether being benchmark or not benchmark, you cannot feel it. Matters, matters two or matters three, uh, mm -hmm. at 2018, 2017, thereabouts, you can get it 200. But today, as I'm talking to you, if not 350, 400, you cannot get those cars to buy. So I don't see the value of bank benchmark over there. Likewise, the spare parts. When you go to Abu Sokai to go and buy spare parts, when you go, something like Sprinter, steer rack goes last year for 1,800. It's now 2,400. Very interesting. That, that you can feel the impact in our sector. So I don't see the benchmark value over there. You, you, raise, a a you raise a very interesting point, uh, David. So what you're saying is that over the last two years when this discount has been in place, as drivers, you have not seen the benefits in pricing for you as drivers who, who buy spare parts and import cars. Exactly so. 
Okay. Okay. I mean, but 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 that that is a that's a very big big point. I mean, so why should we why should we have it then? No. Yeah, but the exchange rate will catch up with it. So obviously, no, but, but ours, ours was to contain and sustain the prices. The factors, to reduce, the factors, excuse me. No, but uh, uh, what reduce? What, did you reduce <laughs> your your? Did you reduce your benefited goods? Tell me. If you are able to do that, tell me. You speak. Uh, excuse me. Because let me tell you, they are doing this propaganda, saying because you know what they do when they uh, come to public like this, you will say that um, the uh, consumers did not have the benefit. No, but this is uh, excuse me. This is I, 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 I will union. tell you. I yeah. give you. I give you union. answer. Direct answer. Because it could have been worse. And then if if now it, this thing because the factors we have a same rate, we have um, these um, taxes at the port that has lined up. And so the, 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 the amount that he's talking about could have gone up because the factors, even free charges, if you, you buy the car and put it in the container, the free charges have doubled. Or these are all these are these all pass to the um, uh, to the price. So uh, had it not been the mitigating factor being the benchmark, he could have gone up, and you couldn't have bought his matters that he's talking about. But in any case. Um, uh, what, what, what was I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, I'll come back to you, we'll make a note, remember. <laughs> because I was fighting with remember, you. Remember, I'll come, let me, let me, let me, let me, hear, let me hear Mr. Agbado quickly. Mr. Agbado, so, but I heard of, apart from this, for you held a press conference two weeks ago, and you said government should scrap five taxes on the fuel price, on, 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 on fuel. Um, has government reached out to you at all about it since the press conference to say they, they've heard you, you're going to do something tomorrow? Yes, I can say we heard something from government that yes, there will be some reduction. Oh, there will be the some reduction. Tax. There will be there will be some reduction on the taxes. That okay. is the promise given to us. Okay. That is the promise given to us by three ministers of state. Okay. Namely, the energy minister, the transport, and then the communication. They came to our outfit telling us that they are they have raised a legitimate concern. They will do something about it. To us. It tells us that because of us, because of what we raised that day at Circle or Donor, that's why the budget has been pushed to tomorrow. And we are hoping that something good should come from there. But as I'm talking to you now, you see, we are all talking about waiving tax and other things. But some taxes that are not used, uh, that are museum, should be striped. Whilst my brother talking over there, they should, the benchmark and other things. Yes, you see, when you go to ports, or when you go to buy other things, the taxes, the tax component alone, like fuel alone, have 18 taxes. What that 18 taxes, some are nuisance. That, some are not relevant in the industry today. But yes, still, it's still there. Doing what? This is what we concern. And then the entire coalition of commercial drivers saying some taxes that are not in use at the moment should be scrapped off. Okay, so Mainly, I'll come to you. I'll come to you. So, sorry, go on. Mainly, you mentioned the specifics. Yeah, mainly the price stabilization and recovery levy, the energy debt recovery levy, the energy sector levy, special petroleum tax, and then UPPF, and then this one, post margin, mm. and the fuel market margin. See, well now, well, that is for Ghana, is producing from 95. It doesn't need any marking on it to sell his product. So those taxes must be scrapped off. Okay, so what happens tomorrow if the budget is read and you don't get these uh, reductions? We are hoping that there should be a reduction. But if there's no reduction, we have to push the government to war to do the right thing. Because as I'm saying, I'll keep repeating that place. Those taxes are not relevant to the sector today because store is no more working. So why will you charge those money and where are those money going for? So we hope government will ahead to what we are saying. Okay, still, if not, mm. we will still embark on the strike. The strike, we just suspended it. It's not that we are pulled it off totally. Mm. We just suspended it. Okay. And drivers, this time around, we don't need increment in lorry fares because it's affecting our business too. So we don't need it. What we want is that government to reason with us and then scribe these taxes. So stay with me. Um, uh, Mr. Abin, I'll come, Dr. Abin, I'll come to you, but let me hear him first. Uh, well, I, or, I, let's I, I remember what 
You're all true. But, 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 but let because, me, let me because he's spoken, he hasn't spoken. I want to hear. Uh, what, uh, small but, time. Uh, small time. Just so make, 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 make a brief note for me. Yes. Yeah. He, he, on the point that was made that he, he disputes about the how the cascading effect it was, was unfelt. Um, what's, your, what's your response to that? Well, I think some analysis has to be done on this, okay. honestly. Um, generally speaking, there are so many factors that determine the price of a product at a particular time. So it could be that in a particular time, mm -hmm. uh, even if there was an effort to transfer the benefit to the consumers, other factors came in. So we need to really analyze that. Mm -hmm. But the point is that for us, what is critical is the fact that the introduction of the benchmark values has made the local producer very uncompetitive and it's taking us out of the market. And we are losing jobs. We are losing investment in that respect. Apart from the rice, oh. rice example you gave, which other specific examples can you? Because he challenges that. Yeah, it, well, I will give another example. Another example is the production of oil. One company, one company has a capacity to produce three, uh, 300,000 metric tons per year. The total consumption that we have in this country is between 180 to 200,000 tons if they are producing to full capacity. So just one so they company. Can, they can produce more than we need. Exactly. Okay. So they are actually into exports. Mm. And there are several other producers. They are not producing up to capacity because the demand has dwindled. This same company, they also have plantation. They buy from local sources as well. And they also import part of the crude oil because the total production of the crude oil in the country is about 40 metric tons, 40,000 metric tons. This company needs at least 200,000 metric tons. So they have to add it. Now, since the benchmark value started, it is making the local production so expensive that it is no more commercially viable to buy from local sources, process, and sell in the market. So what they, are, they have also resorted to doing is to import the raw materials and leaving our farmers, leaving our crude oil producers. So the, fact, the point of we not having capacity, we not having capacity, I think that we need to do the hard work, pick the products product by product, assess the, those products, assess the companies producing them, and see whether we have enough capacity. Even where you don't have 100% capacity, no, company, no country starts with 100% capacity, capacity of any, everything. You grow it. In the case of rice, at some point, we're virtually importing everything. It got to a point where we've now reached about 40% capacity. And the target by Ministry of Agri is that by 2022 or 2023, yeah. we should be full capacity. Now, because of the benchmark, a lot of the factories are stalled. So that, date, that uh, uh, target is being shifted again. So if you say you want to reach 100% capacity and, and, uh, uh, before, before you allow the local producers to have their leeway, then you have a problem. Yeah. Once you impose a benchmark, I mean, you reduce the benchmark value and you make the imports cheaper, you will never reach that capacity. Okay. It doesn't work like that in economics. So uh, there are so many, um, I don't want to use lies and all that in this, but it, it's very unfortunate because when they are talking to the public, mm -hmm. you know, my brother can talk. And when he talked, he said that the, um, the consuming public did not have any benefit Benefits, yes. from the benchmark. Mm -hmm. That's what they say because they want to spite the consuming public against the trading community, which is very unfortunate because they know what we are doing for them. And then when they go to a government circles where they are going to do their lobbying, they say that because of the benchmark, the prices is so cheap out there that they cannot compete. Ah, what is he talking about? What am I talking about? What will you tell, uh, tell government? You tell government that prices are cheap because of benchmark. The prices have lowered and then uh, uh, imports have become cheaper. And this what... Uh, this is the argument that you, you give. The, the other oh. time I met you at ye, ye, uh, yeah, economic of course. management. I mean, that is a, uh, excuse yeah. me. That, that's what but, they but were that, saying. That's the point he's making then. That it's, it's not true that they haven't passed on. Because the imports are cheaper than... But, but, that. Exactly. That's what, that, that's what they, they say. They are so confused. They don't Who's know that? where their, their problem is. They don't have to benchmark their frustration on the import that has already gone through import, uh, um, uh, container hiring, um, very expensive uh, paying duty, uh, coming from this long journey, pay uh, the, those excessive lists and all that. And then you benchmark your manufactured goods with it. And so they are, they are, uh, they are confused. They don't know what they are doing. You have to benchmark 
and see why you can be competitive so that the locals may not travel uh, thousands of uh, uh, miles. Go import. And then and buy. Because I've told you, there are some local manufacturing entities that are doing extremely well. Ghana have to look from within. Because, let me tell you, most of these companies that are not doing well are those companies that are pushing them to do this. Because those that are doing well do not even care about this bed bag and mm. all that because you are buying let from me, them. Me, Nobody go. I, I need to go for a break quickly. But to take seconds to respond to that. And yes, I'll let go. me respond to that. Mm. I think he's not being factual here. The point is very simple. You are saying that uh, the companies that are not doing well uh, are the ones that are pushing for mm. this. What are you talking about? The point is that has government imposed any high duties on, 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 on imports? They haven't done that. What they did was they reduced the duties. Mm -hmm. And in the process... You made that point. I said, I've made that point. So if they say they are restating it, there's no change. If it was, otherwise, uh, then, then in that case, if you, if, but, but, then everybody will become an importer. Some of them That's are behaving okay. the same way no. as no. we, the importers. They mm -hmm. import... Um, about over 95% of their input of production, most of them are doing like uh, assembly and all that. So the but, cost but, but is that, almost that's the same. Factual. That's factual. Yeah. What would you say is factual? That, that, yeah, it's very that's factual. Can, 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 can I, very, can very factual. Very, very quickly, over 95 percent. Uh, so, can, yeah, can, as can, importers. Can, just a second. Just a second. Yeah, 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 as importers, as we are. Yeah, wait a second. Uh, 30 seconds to respond to. And then they want in this modern day. Mm -hmm. That's everybody that's 100 percent money. Yeah, but what he's talking you, about you, is 90% import, 10% it's import. Not, it's not true. It's, it's, it's true. true. Let, let me okay. tell you. I, I, I want to take a quick break. break. When I return, I'll have Harry Brown and so David Aguado. Let, let, sure. let me give you that example. I mean, David uh, Aguado is the, the vice chair of the Consent Drivers Union. We have Professor Lord Mensa with us, an economist. I'll end with him shortly. But in the studio with me is Seth uh, Chumakwabwa with the AGI and uh, Dr. Joseph Obeng. Uh, David, let me take your final thoughts on this. So, I mean, as for drivers, apart from your fuel issues, and of course, now that we are learning about the benchmark values, that you say that doesn't affect you because, you know, apart from your fuel issues, you are fine, right? I mean, this is, the, you, we are not anticipating any increases in fares, you say. Yes, the fuel issue is part. Likewise, the taxes on the duty suit is part. You know why? <clears throat> when those things are reduced to maximum or bearable, it will, it will help all Ghanaians, not we, the transport community alone. Because when we buy it at a high cost, we will, we, will, we will trickle it down to the consumers, which are the passengers. So the benchmark being taken off, some taxes also must be scribed at the port to, to make things easier. We need tax to develop the country. Yes, but some taxes are not doing, the, they, they are not serving the purpose that it has been crafted for. Okay, I mean, l l let's, let's wrap this conversation about the benchmark values. Um, uh, Dr. Bing, it, I, it, is, it is now too late in the day. The government has decided this will happen. So what is the Guta going to do about it? No, how can you be sure? You because, think it will change? Because our, our our narrative, what we we presented, is so convincing. And what? But the the the, the mm. AGI and then uh, the um, um, the the manufacturers, they have a leverage already about forty five percent over the uh, trading community that they can use. You know that the added fund and all that we pay on our imports, and then we use that um, fund to support industries. They have a lot of adv advantages. The concessions that government have done for them, and they are not taking advantage of that. The, um, 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 Professor, Lord Mensah, Finally, yes. Professor Lord Mensah was talking about um, a lack of fa um, 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 revenue and that we have to um, do this and all that. But one thing he has forgotten, that when you keep on piling the tasks, it become, uh, people become fatigued. Yeah. And tax payment and the, the ability to pay is not there. Yeah. Because uh, uh, taxes, taxes, when they are affordable, people pay. You know, they are saying that um, um, imports have reduced at the port. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the purchasing power of the consuming uh, public is low. Mm -hmm. And then our, mm -hmm. it affected our turnover. And then also... But finally, I want, I want to give the final word to Lord, 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 Lord So give, give me a quick word on what your expectation is tomorrow, on the back of all the concerns that we've had and where the economy is right now, briefly. 
Yeah, I think um, I believe um, it's going to be a situation where government will need money. So whatever the case may be, I mean, the taxes that uh, government intends to rake in from the economic activities that we have will definitely be obvious. And so um, this, we should expect that this uh, benchmark value, I hope that it will be targeted um, uh, to the extent that it will be targeted towards um, um, produce that we cannot have in this country. And in that case, it should be able to go in a long way to help us. Other than that, we may be killing our own industries that we've established. Now, this was introduced two years ago, um, thinking maybe it will build up into our economy. And uh, probably, I believe that the economic management team of this country have realized that it's not that yielding as that. expected. Yeah. So therefore, we should have that, you know, mm. we should scrap it and then yeah. hold up the money for the purpose of, you know, economic you. Act, uh, uh, government. Uh, about 30, 30 seconds for you on that. Yes. Unfortunately, it's not good to break it down for us. There is no such leverage. If it was, we will encourage all traders to also become manufacturers. It doesn't work that simple. We don't have that kind of leverage. If we are, then take advantage of it. If you take the VAT, for example. I just have 10 seconds. So yes. Yeah. If you take the VAT, for example, when you reduce the benchmark value, because that becomes the declared value, the VAT component also reduces by half. Mm. And in fact, well, importers uh, become to, get more. It's just a few so hours. Yeah, more yeah, than us. Just a few hours. We'll get more. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll 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 wait to hear from the finance minister when he appears before the uh, parliament.